Hey guys, Kid Creep here. Today we're going to talk about headwear. Dude, if some like random hiker just came by, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd probably just stare at him like the masculine urge to not chase him at full tilt. So exactly one year ago today, I posted my very first video and that was the PCU visual user guide video. And uh, I got some questions asking me about my headwear and I'm finally doing that video. Now you might be thinking, you know, why did it take you so long to talk about hats? And it's really because I wanted to make sure that I had a really good headwear system. I don't want to spend like 10 minutes talking about like a single product. I want to talk about individual components that come together into a system. But before we get into that, today is actually a very special day. We have our very first sponsor of the channel and that is going to be Venture Surplus. I want to thank them so much for sending out some really awesome kit for me to play with. Uh, they also gave us a discount code. So use discount code KITCREEP at checkout. And working with them has been super helpful for me because it allowed me to have a wider variety of things for me to show you guys. Uh, things that are readily available on their website right now. As you know, I love military surplus. Great capability at very low price. I've been buying from them for years now and a lot of the stuff in my cold weather system actually came from their website, so that's really funny. But they have really great options, uh, and they also get some really cool Gucci stuff in every now and then. So, you know, I'm gonna copy brass facts here. Um, save them in your favorites folder. Uh, check on the website every single day, see what they got in, follow them on Instagram. So yeah, thank you again, Venture Surplus. So let's get into the headwear that I'm currently using and what has been working for me. So this setup right here is what I'm going to be using most of the time during you know high levels of activity uh, as well as the warmer temperature ranges. So first, let's start off with this really weird fan of the opera looking thing right here. Uh, no, I didn't break my nose. This is the Face Glove Flex from Outer U. I found out about these things very recently. Uh, I think it was from, I think I saw a tactical alpinism on Instagram wearing it. And I was like, what the heck is that thing? And I looked into it and I realized that it was exactly what I've been looking for. This is a PolarTech soft shell fleece lined fabric that's held onto your ears by these uh, surgical bands here. And it also has a metal wire running through the nose, very similar to a COVID mask. You know, I'm sure we're all pretty, you know, used to that feeling by now. But this is super cool because unlike their other models where you uh, boil it in water and then it actually molds to your face, this one has this middle wire that I can easily bend to the shape of my face and then I can straighten it out, fold it up real flat and then shove it in a pocket. This has been awesome, not just to protect my nose, but also to keep my goggles from fogging, right? Once you pull that gator over your nose, all that air is gonna go up directly into your goggles and then you're not gonna be able to see and then you have to take off your eye protection and eye protection is very important, right? It's made in New Hampshire, in the USA. Uh, it was tested on Everest and it got the Sherpa thumbs up. So if it's good on Everest, it's good literally anywhere else. I can pull over my mouth and it has a really good seal and there's no cold spots coming through this thing. Um, this allows me to protect as much skin on my face as possible while still being able to breathe out of my nose and then allow me to wear eye protection without fogging them up. This was super crucial when I went ice climbing because as you know, because as you know, when you're ice climbing, every time you drive that tool into the ice, it is going to shatter and ice shards are gonna go everywhere. And I felt them bouncing off my glasses. Another really cool thing about this is it has this patented nose tip protection technology. And essentially all that is, is it's another little layer of fabric that comes down. So it not only covers the top of your nose, but it's also covering the very tip. So basically all that's exposed is my nostrils and like a little bit of my septum. Next up, I wanna talk about my hat. This is a lightweight, 150 weight merino wool cap coming from Smart Wool. Because it's so thin, it's easily able to fit underneath my ball cap. You know, I'm an American, we love ball caps. These are very popular among backpackers and hikers because, you know, it keeps that sun out of your face. Sunburn is still an issue at altitude. Even if it's cold, you can still get pretty messed up by that sun. Also does a great job of keeping your hood out of your face. So never underestimate a ball cap. It is in fact a four season item. So that's why I love this lightweight beanie because it allows me to wear my ball cap year round. So this has been an amazing discovery for me. This allows me to breathe, not fog up my goggles and have as much 
of my face covered as possible in really high winds and really cold conditions. And it also fits underneath my helmet. And the reason that I really like that is because it means that I don't have to wear a balaclava underneath my helmet, right? I can't fit a very thick hat underneath this thing, but balaclavas of course fit very nicely. But my issue with balaclavas is that you can't dump heat as well as you could with something like a neck gaiter, right? So once I have a helmet on, it's not coming off because you always want to keep your head protected, especially when you're rock climbing, ice climbing, skiing, all that kind of stuff. You don't want to remove your protection. So once that balaclava is up and on, it's staying on, right? With a balaclava, I can pull it down underneath my chin, but there's nothing I can do about all that insulation around my neck. So it doesn't allow me to dump heat and I overheat very easily and very quickly in a balaclava. And this neck gaiter is coming from minus 33. This is their mid-weight version and it's great. Wool has a lot of really awesome properties. And although I'm not a huge fan of it on my top or my bottoms, for headwear, facewear, neckwear, hands, feet, all that, it is awesome. I highly recommend having wool face coverings like this. So I guess next up, we'll talk about these guys right here. These are the Oakley Cliff Dens, and I love these because they just make you look like a super villain or something like that. Um, but what's great about these is that they're not just sunglasses, right? So they're kind of like a goggle sunglass hybrid, right? So that's what sets these apart from a normal pair of glasses. The other really cool thing is that they are modular, right? We all love modular systems, right? And you can take off this windscreen that you see right here, and then it leaves a gap that way you can actually vent them and they won't fog up as easily. But when you have this thing on, it's gonna do a really good job of blocking out that wind and it's not gonna cut through, act like a wind tunnel and just dry out your eyes. So I really like that. Uh, you can also remove this piece right here in the center. And when you do that, you kind of convert it into like summer mode. So yeah, I do wear these year round. They're super awesome. And uh, they just don't really like to fog. So that's great. So the use, that Oakley Prism lens technology, the same kind of stuff that they use on their goggles, and I'll talk about these in a sec. Um, and again, like I said before, it really helps me see definition in the snow and the ice because snow blind is a real pain in the butt. It gives you like high definition on the snow, right? Snow blind doesn't just blind you, but it also disallows you from seeing um, features in the snow. So being able to keep these glasses on at all times uh, really allows me to see better definition in the snow while I'm skiing or where to place my ice tool when I'm ice climbing. Next up for eyewear is going to be more Oakley, right? These are Oakley Prism goggles. And of course, these are great for skiing and stuff like that because when you are going downhill and you've got whipping winds and you're going, you know, 60 miles an hour down a slope, oh, you know, it's a, definitely a good idea to have something that has a true windscreen all around the sides just to keep, you know, powder and wind from just messing you up. So yeah, when it comes to winter eye protection, I'm a huge fan of Oakley Prisms. And I don't really have too much to say about these goggles. They work. They're really good snow goggles. Now, the helmet, I'm not going to talk too much about the helmet. What I will tell you is that you should wear a helmet and make sure that it is rated for what you are doing, right? This is a Team Wendy M216, and I have some opinions on it. And I'm not going to get into that right here, so... Wait for that video later. So next up, I wanna talk about a neat trick that you can do in case you do not have a face glove like this. Um, I don't even know what gator this is. My buddy got issued it and then he gave it to me later. But if you cut a slit in your, no in your neck gator, then you're able to poke your nose out and that allows you to breathe through your nose and you know not fog up your goggles as badly. However, if you do breathe out of your mouth, it's gonna go straight into your goggles, like what's happening right now, and it's gonna be super, super duper annoying. So this is a nice little hack if you already have a neck gator, but just know, once you do this and you cut a hole in it that's not supposed to be there, it's just gonna keep on opening up and whatever you just cut a hole into, it's, it's gonna get destroyed, right? Next up is this guy. This is a grid fleece beanie. This thing also came from Venture Surplus and I like it because I needed a mid-weight option, right? So I have my lightweight and I have my heavyweight. So I wanted this to be like an in-between option and it's actually very warm. It, since it's made out of grid fleece, it has a lot of space for ventilation and because it's made out of uh, synthetic fleece, it's very comfy too, right? Um, there is a funny story behind this hat. Uh, this is made by Meguiar, and I, I got it because it just looked really neat. It looked cheap, and I love waffle pattern, as I'm sure we all do. And something that I realized when I got it is that the waffle pattern is actually upside down, right? So the grid fleece here is actually supposed to be facing towards your skin, towards where the moisture is going to be. That way the moisture can move up that pillar of fleece 
up to this shiny top layer here where it is then going to disperse and then evaporate. So even though it is technically incorrect, it's still very warm, it feels good. And I, I think there might be a little bit of a difference between having you know, a hat on a head of hair versus a base layer on you know, bare skin, right? So it's not really next to skin because I do have a lot of hair, if you couldn't tell, but I do honestly like it. And I like that it comes in black because you know I'm not a huge fan of Coyote. Uh, Unfortunately, they make the PC level three in one color, but there is a version two of this hat where they did actually, you know, correct it and they put the shiny top layer on top. So that's pretty cool. If you want to go pick those up, they do have the version two, but the version one is still just fine. It's a great mid-weight cap. Also, the version two only comes in Coyote. But yeah, the Meguiar Grid Fleece cap is a really nice mid-weight option. Uh, it's definitely something that you can use during, you know, higher levels of activity because it does have that space in between the grid fleece. So it's definitely a good tool to have in your arsenal. <sighs> Next up from there is going to be the PolarTech 300 micro fleece cap. These have been issued to the military for a while now. Everyone loves them. They're very popular on the commercial market. And the reason for that is because they are very lightweight. They are fairly wind resistant, which is really cool. And they're just super cheap. This is definitely something that you can have like three of in your pack because you will lose them, right? I've lost like two or three of these already. Um, and if you go back to my original PCU video, I was actually wearing an outdoor research wind pro hat. And that was supposed to be like my, you know, Gucci replacement for the PolarTech 300 fleece. What I can tell you is that I lost it and I'm not very upset about it because I have, you know, this PolarTech hat. My primary heavyweight cap was an outdoor research wind pro. And I'm not sure exactly where I put that. And yeah, the Wind Pro was, you know, technically windproof, but you know, these Polar Tech hats are wind resistant enough that they're just great. And also it's like a quarter of the price of the Wind Pro. So I'm just gonna keep buying these from Venture Surplus from now on. And I recommend that you do too. I'm hearing things. So yeah, this is not something that I would wear during high levels of activity, but it's definitely something that I would wear like to sleep because it is so super comfortable. I can just throw one of these on and I have them pre-staged all over my pack. I'll have like one in my lid and then I'll have one in one of my warming layers and then I'll have like a lighter weight one and like, you know, another one of my layers. The only real issue is that this fleece right here, uh, everything's gonna stick to it. It's gonna absorb rain like a sponge and snow is just going to cake to it. So the easiest fix for that is just to have a soft shell hood like this, right? So you can really think of this as like your heavyweight base layer. So next up is this US issue wool knit cap. This thing's awesome because it is just a very cheap and very well made 100% wool knit cap. What I like so much about it is A, it's made of wool and B, it's so long that you can pull it down over your face and you can just pass out like this, right? So it's kind of like the great kilt of hats, which is really cool. And as we all know, wool is very expensive as a material, but this thing is very cheap. So you can have a very thick, very warm wool beanie for a very low price. Another reason that I really like it is because it's very stretchy. So I can get a lot of really good coverage. I can pull it down over my neck if I need to. And the other cool thing is, you know, like I was saying before about the Polar Tech beanie, uh, it, this is going to be exposed to the elements unless you have a hood up to cover it. But the thing about wool is it stays warm when it's wet, right? So if this gets soaked from snow or from rain, it's still gonna retain its warmth. The other cool thing is that it is anti-stink. So if you don't want your head to smell like crap after you're sweating for like, you know, days on end, this is a really cool option. So the only real issue with this wool knit cap is that it is not made of merino wool. And as we know, merino wool is super, super soft and it feels good against your skin. However, this does not, right? When I wear this thing, I always find myself like rubbing my head to like scratch myself. So an easy thing that you can do is you just put on a very lightweight merino wool cap and then you can just throw this on over it. And now the lightweight cap acts kind of like a base layer. And then this is like, you know, a mid layer slash outer layer kind of thing. So that's really cool. And that also follows Mark Twight's principles of not changing clothes, but only adding layers on over. So like I was saying before, I like to wear a ball cap over top. And because this wool knit cap is so long, it very easily fits over my ball cap. I can extend it down over my neck and I'm very, very nice and warm. I love how much material it has and how versatile it can be. So like I said before, not a huge fan of balaclavas, but this right here is my favorite one. And this is the Elite Issue Wool 
fire retardant balaclava, right? So this is an issue piece of kit. It is available at venturesurplus.com, but they didn't actually send it to me. I was wearing this in my PC video a year ago. And uh, this thing's great because it's made out of, uh, because it's made out of wool. So it's naturally going to be fire retardant. It also has mesh here at the top. So that's really nice. Cause if I'm wearing a helmet on over top, if I open up, you know, the vents of my helmet, then it's going to allow my head to breathe really well and just, you know, prevent me from overheating too much. But again, the real issue is that if I pull this down below my chin, yes, I can breathe, but it's still gonna be covering my neck. I'm still gonna be overheating. Um, and then if I pull this over my nose to protect the tip of my nose, uh, it's gonna blow all that air directly up into my goggles. And that's why I'm not wearing them right now because I'm not gonna be able to see a thing, honestly. Now I'll wear these things at night uh, to go to sleep because I have to worry less about like my hat, like coming off my head or a neck gaiter, like, you know, choking me out or something like that. Um, so it's just nice to have one continuous piece of wool just over your head while you go to bed because, you know, you can't put your face inside your sleeping bag. You have to leave it out because you're going to wet out your sleeping bag. You're going to die. And I'll also wear this when it's extremely cold, right? If it's super, super cold and the wind is kicking my butt and I'm just absolutely suffering, these are great because they eliminate cold spots, right? Because it is one continuous piece of fabric. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of exposed skin. However, with this one, if I do pull it on over my nose, it is going to leave a bit of my neck uncovered and cause a little bit of a cold spot there. But I don't wear this thing on its own. I'll show you how I actually wear this. So this is what I like to do when the temperatures really start to drop. I'll wear this balaclava on here as like a second skin and it makes sure that I won't have any cold spots. I'll throw on my fleece cap on top just to make sure that that, you know, vent on the top is uh, covered. And then I'll wear my neck gaiter on the bottom just to make sure I get a full seal between the balaclava and, you know, my, you know, base layers. And then this still allows me to throw on a ball cap if I want to, or even throw on my helmet. So this is, you know, my coldest weather setup. If I'm, you know, if I am actually being active and I am actually doing things, uh, this is what I will do. And then of course, it's very easy for me to throw on my cliff dens. And then of course, if I stop moving and I don't want to start cooling down, I just throw on this nice big wool cap on over top and I'm good to go. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but Venture Surplus did send me this cap. Uh, super grateful for that. Thank you guys again. All right, so lastly, one sec. All right, so lastly, I wanna show you guys this really cool, really weird uh, US cold weather mask. But yeah, so a lot of you might know this as the Riddler, as the Riddler mask from the new Batman movie. This is the old school Cold War era uh, US cold weather mask. Now, this isn't typically something that was worn during you know activity or during ruck marches and stuff like that, but it's really more for like wearing to bed, right? So this is a waterproof material here on the outside with a wool blend material on the inside that'll insulate your face. So what you can do is you can get inside of your mummy sleeping bag, have your head sealed up, right? Cause again, you put your mouth inside of that sleeping bag. Uh, you're gonna wet it out. You're gonna die in your sleep. Um, so you can put this thing on, protect your face, button this thing up and then throw on a pair of goggles. And then, you know, you can sleep out in, the, in some pretty nasty temperatures without getting frostbite when you wake up. Now there are some really cool photos of guys using these during like trainings in West Germany and stuff like that. And those go hard as heck, right? But I really like this thing because it is just so cool and so creepy looking. Now I debated making this my main face covering for the channel, but I kind of realized that uh, if you didn't know what it was, you probably just think I'm wearing some weird BDSM crap on my face. So, you know, that's why I just went with wearing a balaclava. The only real downside to this thing is it's itchy. Yeah, it's that itchy kind of wool on the inside. And also the, the mouthpiece does not want to stay open. And then when you want to go to bed, button that up, go to sleep. Now I lied. I actually have one more thing that I want to show you guys. This is really cool. This is a super, super rare boonie hat liner. And it's so rare, in fact, that it's one of a kind uh, because my girlfriend actually made it for me. So one year for Christmas, she was like, oh yeah, I know you like those uh, woodland bucket hat things, right? So uh, I made you this. So it's, so it's like a woodland camo cold weather boonie hat. And my US woodland boonie that I have is actually so oversized uh, in order to fit over like goggle straps and, you know, eye pro and, you know, uh, ear pro. 
that it actually fits over top this thing and kind of works like a boonie hat liner. So I just want to show that off. I thought it was really funny. Maybe a manufacturer should start doing this or something like that, because I actually really do like it. The brim actually kind of acts like a fur ruff where it breaks up that wind a little bit and somehow keeps my ears a little bit warmer without even having to like touch them. So I actually really do like this. She made this out of acrylic yarn. I don't know how she did it, but yeah. So maybe the most important piece of kit was the friends we made along the way. So make sure you find someone that knows how to crochet or knit um, or has a really good sewing machine and knows how to use it, right? Those are all very important skills and being able to uh, not just modify, but also create your own clothing and tailor it to you is super duper cool. So I just want to point that out just because I thought it was fun. Maybe you should ask grandma to do something like this for you because it's cool. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Venture Surplus for sending over this really awesome kit for me to play with. I'm super honored to be working with you guys. And once again, Venture Surplus was kind enough to give us a discount code. So use code KITCREEP at checkout for a discount. And thank you guys so much for 1 million views on my very first video that I posted like exactly a year ago today. Uh, thank you for 14,000 subscribers in about a year. I mean, that's insane. So thank you all again so much for everything. And I'll see you next time when we talk about base layers.